understanding the proper methodology of sizing, selecting, and installing water meters for your commercial and industrial applications is extremely important to any water utility. In the prior four lessons, we walked through an in-depth review of the typical metering technology used in commercial and industrial applications. In part nine of this series, we'll take a deep dive into how to go about determining the correct type of meter based on the type of application. We'll cover some general rules of thumb used in this determination, and then we'll review six applications together. Let's dive into it. In this lesson, we're going to look at how we analyze particular applications and choose the right type of meter. We'll cover two things. We'll go over some general rules of thumb that allow you to pick the right type of meter, and then we will review six different applications and then talk our way through why we would select those particular meters for those applications. Well, let's jump into it. There are three general rules of thumb, and this has really changed a bit because in years past, we didn't really put ultrasonic meters in this discussion, but now they've really become an integral part in commercial and industrial applications. These are just general rules of thumb, but let's talk about why they matter. Turbine meters are applied best in applications where people work or play. Now, why would I say that? In the instance where people work, they're going to be high volumes of water, right? Factories, large businesses, those types of things, they're going to need large volumes of water. They may not have the need for very low flows, so turbine meters work extremely well. In other applications regarding where people play, so let's say ball fields or stadiums, those types of things, they're going to need large amounts of irrigation, right, to water those fields. In areas like stadiums, they're going to have large amounts of people in those facilities where they're not going to have that need for very small flows. But again, just a general rule of thumb. Compound meters, on the other hand, are best applied in applications where people live or work. Let's go back to what I said about work. There are going to be areas where people are going to need large volumes of water due to what they do in that particular facility regarding work, right? But they may also have a need for low volumes if they've got applications. Maybe they're working on the weekends, just doing cleaning work, and they're using very low flow applications. On the other hand, where people live, I could have a 100-unit apartment building. There's going to be times where just one person in that 100-unit complex is taking a shower. I want to be able to collect revenues. Compounds are going to allow me to collect that revenue. When ultrasonic meters came to the market, they sort of leveled the playing field. They are a great all-around type meters. They don't work in every application, but they're pretty flexible due to their very wide operating range. So in this case, for most applications, I would say ultrasonics can be applied where people live, where they work, or where they play. Those are just guidelines. Hopefully that gives you a way to think about those types of meters. And really the best way, of course, is to take a look at the data profiling of an application. But if you were trying to select a particular meter with just limited information, maybe the facility isn't there already, right? Maybe they're just describing the use case of that particular facility. This is going to allow you to potentially choose the right meter for that application. With that in mind, let's take a look at these six particular applications. And I'm gonna give you a few seconds to think about these as we go through them and to choose which type of meter would I use for that application. Now, it could be more than one, right? Or it may not be any of these, so let's walk through them. In application number one, let's think about a condominium complex. What meter would you choose for that application? A turbine, a compound, or an ultrasonic meter? I'll give you a second to think about it. In that case, I would probably choose a compound or an ultrasonic because I am going to have needs, as I spoke about earlier, I'm going to have needs for very low flows. When one or two people are just using water at a time, if I put a turbine meter, I wouldn't be collecting revenues for those very low flows. So those are the two meters that I would select because of their operating characteristics. What about in application number two? Anytown USA High School, what would you use there? A turbine, compound, or ultrasonic? Think about the application. 
What I would choose there again is a compound or an ultrasonic because there are going to be times where you are going to have the very low flows. When the kids are not there, right, it's after hours and it's just the janitorial staff. That janitorial staff is filling up their mop bucket. If I have a turbine meter in there, I wouldn't be collecting any revenue. All right, what about this Las Vegas style hotel? I'm talking about something very big. This is a 500 or 1,000 room hotel, right? They've got three or four restaurants here. They've got, you know, uses for water throughout the, the facility. What would, what would you use here? I would probably use a turbine meter or an ultrasonic meter. In a facility this large, you're not going to have those very low flows where you're using a half gallon per minute, almost no time during the day, right? There's going to be high flows going on at all times. So as a general rule of thumb here, I would use a turbine meter or an ultrasonic meter, okay? If I applied a compound meter, remember what we said earlier. If I applied a compound meter, someone would say, hey, I want to do that because I want to collect all the revenue. I'm probably not going to have between 5 and 25% on my low flow side. I'm gonna be using the turbine side of that compound probably most of the time, hence it doesn't make sense for me to put that compound meter in that application. All right, application number four. Here should be an easy one, right? You've got a very large industrial building here. What meter would you use? All right, I'll, I'll admit this is a trick question. You don't really know. <laughs> the point that I wanted to make here in application number four is, Never let the building size dictate the type of meter. You might look at this and go, you know what? Oh, it's a very large building. I need a turbine meter. Honestly, this could literally be just a warehousing facility. There may only be four bathrooms in this whole place and maybe a kitchen. That's it. I might be able to get away with a disc meter for a building this size, believe it or not. My, my point is, even if the building's very small, or very large, don't let that dictate the meter you choose. Understand what they're actually doing in that building. Application number five. Now, I kind of gave this away earlier. Let's talk about a baseball stadium. Some of very large stadium that you know might seat 50,000 people here. Should be a pretty easy one here, right? What would you choose? I would probably choose a turbine or an ultrasonic meter because I'm not going to have those very low flows. I'm going to need very high flows for the irrigation of this field, right? And for all the uses, all the, the eating facilities throughout this stadium, I'm not going to have those very low flows. All right, last application. This generic 10 room motel. This is where I stayed last time I was on the road, so it's a very nice place, but what would you put as the meter here? This is my trick question. I would potentially, if I had to choose between these three meters, i put a compound or an ultrasonic meter. But the other thing to think about here is that you could potentially get away again with a disc meter in this application because, you know, okay, you might have everyone using a shower at the same time, but even in that case, you probably would not have enough flow to overcome the capabilities, the high side capabilities of a disc meter, right? A two inch disc meter has a flow up to 170 gallons per minute. And it wouldn't be a con constant flow, it would be an intermittent flow. So always look at, even if it's a commercial industrial application, make sure you're looking at all the types of meters and not just thinking in the frame of mind of a large meter, right? Well, my hope is this overview of analysis on meter type will give you a way to start thinking about these applications and just another way to pick the right type based on the things that we reviewed here today. If you have any questions about today's topic, feel free to ask a question in the comment section below and I'll personally provide you with an answer. Or if you'd rather send a private message or have any questions related to metering or meter reading systems that I can help you with, be sure to connect with me on LinkedIn. Our question of the day, what other aspects of meter sizing, selection, and installation do you want to know more about? Please provide your question in the comment section below. If you found value in this content, be sure to click the like button. And if you have a colleague that would benefit from listening to this episode on sizing and selection, be sure to share it with them by clicking the share button. Stay tuned for part 10 of this series where we will begin our focus on metering installation by helping you understand the important topic of turbine meter theory. We'd like to thank you for watching this video and we'll catch you next time on the Smart Water Show.